Hey everyone, this is John Buck. I'm back with the latest video in my array signal processing series. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue talking about the minimum variance distortionless response, or MVDR, beamformer. Uh, and particularly, we're going to look at uh, some something called the generalized side lobe canceller interpretation. This is not a different way, uh, a different beamformer. It's the same beamformer mathematically, but by massaging the equation a little bit, we can think about how to interpret the MVDR beamformer a sort of a parallel combination of things we've already seen and how it connects, or, or maybe it's a cousin of the null steering beamformer we've already seen, but with a little more sophistication. Uh, so let me, uh, let me show you how that works. So if we look at, again, the, the minimum variance distortionless response beamformer, MVDR, remember we, we saw last time our array weights have the form that, that we're going to call this uh, W sub O for optimal. That's what I know because MBDR gets to be a lot to write in every subscript. So the optimal beamformer is, is a combination of, of three things. Uh, the two terms that matter the most are, right, this is the original look direction. This is the manifold vector for the look direction. This is the inverse of the spatial covariance for the, the noise only case. Well, the noise and interfere, but no signal present. So the signal absent so the spatial covariance for the signal absent. And then this alpha, this is just the unity gain part, right? This is just a, a scalar uh, a scalar value. And, and to be clear, uh, let me write it out. Alpha is V naught Hermitian Sn inverse v naught in the denominator. So it's, so it's it's not a constant, and that this is it is important to note this is a function of v naught, right? And and Sn, but for a given environment where we see a given Sn, it is a function of where we're looking. We'll have different gains for you for unity gain. And we're going to have a two-part video today. For today, well, here's our big picture plan, is, is we're going to focus on the single interferer case. So in this case, we have an interferer coming from some direction. We'll call it u sub 1. Its manifold vector is v sub 1. And its power is sigma 1 squared. Right. So we're, And we're going to see, we're going to evaluate what are the array weights we get for this and how can we interpret what is going on inside this uh, particularly the inverse of Sn. The inverse of the spatial covariance matrix has some mathematical things happening inside of it. But if we use uh, some, some linear algebra, we can break that down and get a better understanding for what's going on. So when we have the single interferer, we saw in, in class last time, our, our spatial covariance matrix looks like this, where we have uh, sigma 1 squared times the outer product of the manifold vector, plus, again, background white noise is, is our constant companion. Uh, and so what we're going to do, we have a two-part video approach today. The first video, we're going to use some linear algebra results to get an equation for Sn inverse for this simple case. Uh, and then the second video, we'll go on and plug that in, plug it back into this equation, and, and manipulate some to understand uh, how we can think about what these array weights are doing in terms of uh, more simple building blocks we've already seen in the class. So let's start on the first part now, which is we're going to find Sn inverse uh, in, in an equivalent form that makes it easier to work with. And the key piece of this is something called the Woodbury, well, a form of the Woodbury identity for matrix inverses, which looks like this. So if I have an invertible matrix A plus this is what we call a rank one perturbation, right? X, X Hermitian is just a single column vector outer product with itself. And I take the inverse of that. I can say it's the inverse of A minus A inverse X, X Hermitian A inverse. So all this up on the numerator is a, uh, a another rank one matrix rescaled by one plus X Hermitian A inverse X. And so we can look at and say, well, I want to find the inverse of Sn, so can I match the things inside the parentheses here to what I have? And, and I can, if I, if I think about that, I can say, well, the inverse, the invertible matrix here is this, this inverse. So I'm going to call, I'm sorry, this identity matrix is A, and then this is the rank one part here. 
right? This is the part that's going to be x, x for me. So I'm going to set a equal to sigma n squared i, because not only is it invertible, but it's a really in easy inverse. So I'm going to be a smart and lazy engineer and, and figure out how to make my life a little easier by doing that. And then the one thing I have to be a little careful is x, the column vector, needs to be sigma 1 times v1. Not sigma 1 squared, but sigma 1, so that when I put two of these together, I get back my sigma 1 squared. So now I have these equations here. I can use this equation, I can plug into this equation to get something for Sn, right? If I do this, if I put all this together, then a plus x, x Hermitian is equal to my, I'm sorry, capital S of n. I said sigma a minute ago, but I mean that the spatial covariance S of n. And so I can use this inverse formula to find S of n inverse. And let me, I'll pause the video while I plug in for that and then talk through the result. So now that I've, now that I've plugged everything in, right, this A inverse becomes the inverse of this, which is just sigma n to the minus 2i, because the inverse of i is itself, and the scalar gets flipped. So that plugs in also here and here for these A inverses and in the middle. And then I just plug in x is sigma 1 v1 and sigma 1 v1 Hermitian here. And similarly, uh, for all these other terms down here, and then I can start simplifying things, because I can say, well, I can pull all these scalars out in front, all these sigmas are just constants, scalars, one-dimensional one scalars, or, or, or constants that I can pull out front. They're not part of the linear algebra. And then I have a V1 times I and a V1 Hermitian times I just leave themselves. And down in the denominator, this thing becomes an inner product, right? I have, I pull all the constants out front, and I have a V1 Hermitian I times V1. So let me pull all those constants out front, get things together, and then, and then show what we're left with on the, the matrix part. myself a little more space here to write everything in. Okay, so now that I've pulled all those terms out, right, I'm just left with the V1, V1 Hermitian, this sort of rank one in the numerator. And I start to see I have some very similar terms in the numerator and denominator. Uh, I have the sigma one squared over sigma n squared. Uh, this term here in the denominator, right, well, V1, V1 Hermitian is just the magnitude of V1 squared which when we, when we have these plane waves is just n. So this becomes a factor of n. And I look at this and say, I could also pull this sigma n to the minus two out front, right? And I would, I would end up with, with very similar terms here. So let me do that as my next step, is put this n in and pull the sigma n squared out front, just leaving the identity and then a, a similar form here. Again, make myself a little more room for this. So now that I've done that, pulled the sigma n to the minus 2 out front and put this in, and I get this, and I see I have this, this very similar term appearing in both the numerator and the denominator that is the ratio of the interfere power to the noise power. Right? I have the same term here and here. And so I'm going to define a variable to be that. that we're going to call that the interfere to noise ratio, INR, so that's sigma 1 squared over sigma n squared. And then I'm going to do one of these annoying things professors do all the time when we know what answer we're trying to get to, to, to make the algebra a little more direct, which is I'm going to multiply the numerator uh, term here uh, by n over n, right? I can multiply by one that looks like this, and I'll see that lets me group some terms through here uh, to see even more similar things. Partly one of the obvious ones is the n times sigma one squared will mirror this one. So I'll use that, uh, and then I'll have an n in the, the uh, denominator here that, that will be helpful too. So let me make some space to, to do that algebra and then uh, show you what that looks like. I'll pause, write it out, and talk what it looks like. All right, so now I've, I've gone through that algebra. I've replaced the sigma 1 squared over sigma n squared by i n r. I've put this one of these n's with that in the numerator. I've put the other one. Oh, I forgot the other one. Let me put it here. It should be under this term here. And I've pulled this piece out because this is sort of where the action is happening in terms of linear algebra and projections. And this is just a scaling factor, right? This is a constant gain. I mean, this is a gain term, and this is actually a linear algebra term. This is a, an outer product. And in fact, if, if I ignored this, if I could put my hand over it and hide this term here for a second, uh, we'd see this looks a lot like a projection matrix, right? If I took that away just for a second, I'd say, well, that's starting to look like an orthogonal projection matrix, except it's got this, this gain on it. So maybe it's not exactly a projection matrix, but that's a useful resemblance to pull out in front. And so the last thing I'm going to do, because it's a useful thing for later, we're going to define 
this this whole thing out front here we're going to call beta just sort of as a shorthand or temporary variable uh, as we go on in the derivation so beta is n times the interfere to noise ratio over 1 plus n times the interfere to noise ratio and at this point, we should also notice, we say, oh, you know, this is almost kind of like an array gain if we were looking at the interferer. We're not. The interferer is the thing we're trying to get rid of. But if we were going to go look in that direction, this would kind of look n times i and r would be like the, the array gain for our gain, array of n sensors uh, that this that's, would come out in front. And so if I sort of finish this up for this video, we say we've now got our... For, for a single interferer case, that the inverse of the spatial covariance matrix takes this form here, which is almost like a projection matrix, but sort of with a variable gain in the middle of it, and this constant term out front, right? So, so we're able to write it in this form here. And now uh, that's where we'll stop for this video. In the second video, I'll go on and we'll talk about how to, when I plug this into the formula for the array weights, what do we find?